Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Coffee with Court, where today we are going to be talking about The Rural Diaries by Hilary Burton Morgan. With the times that we're in, I just thought it was important to maybe dial back a little bit and talk about something that inspires courage and strength. And I thought this book really did that for me. So today we're going to be talking about a few life lessons that I got from the story. For those of you who do not know who Hillary Burton Morgan is, she played Peyton on One Tree Hill. She was also on White Collar, The Secret Life of Bees, and is currently on Council of Dads with a host of uh, many other acting credits to her name. And she just released a book that originally, I just watched an interview um, that she had given, and she said originally she had set out to write this book because she lives on Mischief Farm, which was a dream that she always had to own a farm, and she had absolutely no idea what she was doing, and now she's doing it. And so she just wanted to kind of show other people like how to run a farm, and it ended up kind of turning into like this memoir and um, a very like personal, um, almost diary, and a lot of her triumphs and her struggles and really resonated with me and I thought that they would also um, resonate with you too. If you haven't read it yet, it might inspire you to pick it up. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about some life lessons that I have learned in the Rural Diaries. So number one, you are not alone. This is something that I feel I always need a reminder about. The In the very, very beginning of the book, Hillary talks about her time on One Tree Hill. And for those of you who might just be joining me, like my whole point of starting this series on YouTube is to inspire people to live their creative passions and find happiness and joy every day in you know, keeping their dreams alive. So I have always wanted to be um, a writer and an actress full time <laughs> since I was younger. And it's a journey that I'm still currently on. So right in the very beginning of the book, she talks about her time on One Tree Hill. She's 19 years old, she's on this very successful TV show and she still feels like something's missing and she feels like, she feels very unfulfilled in her life. And I thought it was just so interesting because you, you watch it on TV and for someone, you know, in my shoes, I'm like, oh gosh, like what I wouldn't give to be her or what I wouldn't give to, to be on that show or be them or, or have that life. And so it was interesting to me to see that even though she typically had what, what you would think, you know, all actors kind of work for, especially, you know, at such a young age, she still felt kind of lost and unfulfilled, which is something I struggle with, um, for, you know, from time to time, because you know, maybe I'm not quite where like I would have hoped that I've been at this point. So there's other stories in the book as well, when she talks about, um, you know, not wanting to live in LA because she just feels completely out of place and it's just not somewhere that, you know, she gets this sense of belonging. There is um, a lot of talk of infertility and miscarriages within the novel as well and her battle with postpartum depression and her battle to just really um, try to figure out the best way for her to heal from that process. And I think I know like for me and my own struggles with having an eating disorder that a lot of the time like I kept everything bottled up inside because my first instinct and my first thought was well nobody around me is going to understand so you almost I almost had like this sense of like shame and embarrassment and you know nobody could know that I was going through this because like I I am a strong person I carry the weight of the world on my shoulders and I don't I don't want anyone to see my weakness. And so I think that that was such an important message for me to read that everybody, no matter what you're doing in your life, no matter what your career is, no matter where you live, everyone has their own battles that they're fighting. And there's always gonna be, like there's always someone out there that's fighting those same battles that may understand. So for me, when I started telling people about my eating disorder, I felt as if it took the power away from my eating disorder and put it back, you know, into me. Like I had more control over my eating disorder and it had less control over me. So one of my main takeaways from this is if you do feel like you are struggling with something, you are not alone. Ask for help. You know, one of the great things about the internet these days is that there's 
everything's at your fingertips. So Google self-help groups or, you know, read articles for people that, you know, may have experienced the same things that you did because you are not alone and there there is somebody out there that can that can relate to you and just talking about it or even reading about someone else's experience can make, you know, all the difference for you. So that is my first life lesson. You are not alone. You do not have to fight any battle alone. The second lesson, my little sheet is right here, um, is that you can't always control your life. And sometimes you really do have to learn how to roll with the punches. I think you'll just have a more heightened positivity and view on your life. So in the book, Hillary is on Montreal Hill. She's feeling lost, she's feeling unfulfilled. So she actually ends up leaving before the show is um, off air, before the show's over. There's a couple, a season or maybe two without her. Um, but so she left One Tree Hill and her plan was to go to Paris, to go to Paris and figure out who she is and find herself and you know, her next steps in life. And while planning her move to Paris and while packing, she actually ends up meeting Jeffrey Dean Morgan, which is her now husband. Her plans get thrown off track and she actually doesn't end up going to Paris. And you know, she just kind of rolls with it. It feels right to her. So she says, you know what? What the heck, I'm not going to Paris. We're gonna see where this goes. Jeffrey Dean Morgan, I will always remember as Danny Duquette on Grey's Anatomy, but he's always in, also in P.S. I Love You. He's currently on The Walking Dead. Um, he booked a role in Kerhongston, New York, and they, um, she, so Hillary goes with him to this cabin that they're staying in while he's filming. And at the time, like she's still kind of lost. She feels like she doesn't really belong in LA. And at this cabin, she, almost just kind of feels a sense of belonging. She likes who she is there. She likes what her relationship is like there. And she kind of is just like, you know what, I really could do this. I think this is the type of lifestyle I'm kind of looking for. And having this conversation with, um, you know, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, he goes out and finds like this cabin in Rhinebeck, New York, and says, hey, I found this cabin, like thinking about, you know, we should think we should buy it. Like, what, what do you think? So they go and look at this cabin. It needs a ton of work, but she's like, you know what? yes, let's just do it. And so they purchase this cabin and they start their life in Rhinebeck. Um, while they're in Rhinebeck, they build a ton of relationships. And one of them is with um, a man named Ira who runs Samuel's Sweet Shop in the village. And unfortunately he has an untimely passing. And later um, Hillary and Jeffrey D. Morgan find out that the the sweet shop is actually like kind of going under. They've been struggling for a really long time. so. Jeffrey has this idea to purchase the sweet shop with some friends and Hillary is like, I'm sorry, what? Um, and it takes her like a minute, but then she's like, you know what? Yes, like let's do it. And she just goes like 110% in and she's renovating and she's remodeling and she's you know changing out the structure and she's learning about town policies and you know just why the business was struggling and like how she can make it better and you know for to keep it around the, in the village of Rhinebeck because it is such like a historical and strong piece of the of the town and so all of these like things that are like kind of like happening or, or being thrown at her are just just really reminded me that like you can have this plan in life like she wanted to go to Paris like that was her plan but you know what happened is that she met Jeffrey Dean Morgan and then all this stuff kind of spiraled and now like here she is she owns she lives in Rhinebeck New York she owns a sweet shop and it's just it it goes to show that like your life may not always go as planned and you know it's not just a rascal flat song you know like life is going to throw you curves and like you do you have to learn to swerve and if you do and you embrace that change or embrace those punches coming at you, there's like something amazing really can come out of it. I do 100% believe that life is all about perspective and the way that you look at things. So there's my life lesson number two, okay? In honor of Rascal Flats, life throws you curves and you just need to learn to swerve, okay? Roll with the punches. It's not always gonna go as planned. Life lesson number three, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. I am an introvert, okay? If I had to choose between like dressing up, going out to a cocktail and like meeting people and having conversations to sitting in my pajamas on the couch watching TV or writing my book, like I would choose the latter because it's just, it, it's it's kind of like an uncomfortable situation to me to, to go out into like the unknown. And especially like people, boggle my mind who can go out by themselves. I have a friend who moved to Atlanta 
when her husband took a job there and she would literally just like go to the bar by herself and just like grab a cocktail and just like you know to get herself out of the house because she didn't know anyone at the time and i'm so envious of people that do that because i i could never do that um but you know in the story you know here hillary is now she just like uprooted her life from north carolina and jeffrey dean morgan you know is you know he spent most of his life in la he had a house in la and now they're in this small town of rhinebeck new york where they didn't know anybody it just felt like the right move for them and so the cabin that they are living in now needs like a ton of renovations and hillary is all about it so she goes into town and she goes to like williams lumber and just a bunch of different places to you know get the tools that she needs to make this cabin her her new home and in doing so and in you know, just throwing herself into the town and into this project and not being afraid to like go out and mingle, she ends up building all of these relationships that truly as she like, you know, gets further and further along in her life are the backbones of what she, you know, comes to really need in certain situations. So for example, she doesn't own Samuel's sweet shop by herself. She owns it with some friends that she had actually met like while she was in Rhinebeck. She learns about Sinterklaas through, you know, people in Rhinebeck. She learns about Mischief Farm through people in Rhinebeck. Like she had no idea that the town of Milan existed until, you know, someone was like, hey, you should look over there. And, you know, Mischief Farm you came to her. So by putting yourself out there, you are preparing yourself to like build relationships and make connections and just really have a life that at the end of the day is fulfilling and not lonely and empty. So life lesson number three, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Number four, communication is key. One of the things I absolutely adore about this book is that she is very raw and very open about her relationship with her now husband. It is not always rainbows and butterflies. There are struggles. There's two different personalities coming together and they have to learn to somehow compromise. They have to learn how to be there for each other. They have to learn how to comfort and support each other in different ways because each of them need that differently. And her just openness about it is amazing. Um, her struggle with the miscarriage, you know, she had this pain and this emptiness inside of her and she was like struggling on her own, having no idea that you know, men also struggle as well when miscarriages happen. And by her kind of like closing herself off because she didn't really know what else to do, she closed off that communication between her and her husband. So she didn't really understand that he was also struggling as well. And it's, it's that and it's different scenes in the book where, you know, when she finally opens up and says how she feels, that she, you know she realizes that that opens up this conversation for a better understanding between the two of them and i really appreciate that because honestly i am the type of person where if something's wrong and you ask me i'm like it's fine i'm fine don't worry about it and the more that i've learned to like open up and talk about things the the less burden I feel like I carry on my shoulders. You know, I'm the type of person where like, I don't like to cry. I have always felt like crying was a sort of weakness. And you know, it's taken me a long time to learn that like crying, it's, it's a sense of healing and it's cathartic. And sometimes it just feels really damn good. And so I think that's just really, really important, not only for your, with your significant other, but just for like your family and people around you to talk to them when you're feeling something. You know, communication is really, key to building friendships and a foundation that ultimately is going to you know put everybody in in a better place so that's number four so number five i'm actually going to read um the full excerpt from the book um because i feel like it's just such an integral part of life and it just absolutely spoke to me i am the type of person where i'm like i have this really great idea and then i try it for like a week or a month and it doesn't work and i'm like oh i failed like forget it like let's try something else and it just really spoke to me especially like in you know writing and in acting because when i submit to my query to literary agents a lot of the time they have like the same like ending line and it is that publishing is not a sprint it's a marathon and so 
a lot of things take time and you're just like planting the seed for it to grow into something amazing. So I'm gonna read this here. All the lessons we've gathered from living here, from buying Samuels, from engaging with our neighbors and celebrating their talents, we wanted to share that. The same way I had been inspired by other people's stories when I was low, I wanted to pay it forward and continue the message. So here's the line. Try. The want to creates the how to. And if all else fails, just fake it. But for God's sake, at least try. I know there's a lot of things I do and I, I don't think I'm alone in this. Or I guess I should say there's a lot of things that I don't do. And I don't think I'm alone in this. I want to do something. I want to try something. But I'm afraid. And I don't want to take the risk because I don't know if the reward is going to be greater than the risk itself. And... I think life is too short to be afraid and to not take risks, which is, I dip my feet in it every now and then, right? Like if you've been following me for a while, you know, I, sometimes I have a nine to five job. Sometimes I have a freelancing job. Sometimes I go back to the nine to five. Sometimes I go back to freelancing because it gives me more time to write and it gives me time to, you know, go on set and, you know, get into the production and the filming of things to, you know, try and build the careers that really fulfill that passion for me. So I just love that line. I feel like it 100% spoke to me. I hope that if there's anyone out there watching this video that you heard that, okay? Take the risk. Don't be afraid of failure, okay? Fake it till you make it, right? Um, but yeah, like she said, for God's sake, just try. Just try. At the end of the day, is the what if gonna be greater than the well I tried, right? So try. Um, and then lastly, and this is just spoken, I feel like so eloquently during the novel in so many different situations. One of the things she talks about is like how farm life is all about, sorry, this hair is driving me insane. Um, one of the things she talks about how um, with farm life, there is, there's a lot of loss. Like there's a lot of really great things, but there's also a lot of, a lot of loss. And so throughout the story i kind of picked up on this one thing that i wanted to chat about and it was every loss every failure every success is your chance to learn something so for me for example honestly reading this book was hard it was really hard if you like i said if you're just meeting me um by all means like i'm an open book i want to be able to like give strength to others who may have gone through similar situations than me and they just don't know like where to look or where to go. So that's me. Um, but I lived in Rhinebeck, New York for four years and it was like hauntingly similar because, you know, Hillary moved to this town where she ended up finding this sense of belonging and she bloomed into like this person that she had been trying to find her whole life. And when I moved to Rhinebeck, New York, my entire life fell apart. Like I have never known heartache like when I was in Rhinebeck or failure. Or... So in reading this book, I realized that for Hillary, right, without Rhinebeck, she would have never found herself or the, um, or the, the relationships that she has or the, she, her marriage is much stronger and her family, all of that because, you know, of her experiences in Rhinebeck. And for me, I think it's really similar. Like without Rhinebeck, I don't think I would have found myself. And without my experience in that in that town, I wouldn't have found strength and I wouldn't have found courage and I wouldn't have learned like when enough was enough. And I wouldn't have, you know, known that my self-worth and my value is much more than I was giving myself credit for. And in Rhinebeck, I learned to walk away from something that didn't bring happiness or light to my life. And I learned to also like hold myself to higher standards and believe in myself more and believe that I deserved better. And 10 years later, like here I am be because of that experience, I'm finding myself and I'm growing and I'm learning and I am a completely different person than I was back then. And I think that we all have a Rhinebeck, New York. 
I, I really do. I, I fully believe that there is a city that inspires us, that teaches us, that helps us grow. And whether that's your hometown or where you live now, like we all have a Rhinebeck. And during our time in Rhinebeck, you know, we make mistakes and we feel pain and we succeed and we have triumphs and all of that. And we need to embrace every single bit of it because in all of those experiences and in all of those moments, there is a lesson to learn. And those lessons only make us better, only make us stronger, only bring us closer to the person that we're continuously trying to be. So there you have it. There are my life lessons that I learned from reading The Rural Diaries by Hilary Burton Morgan. If you have not picked up your copy yet, I definitely recommend it. You can get it on Amazon. I actually ordered mine from Oblong Books, which is in Rhinebeck. Um, if you do that, I believe that they are still um, doing it, but I um, can't open the book. Sorry. Hillary will sign it for you and then they will ship it out. And I believe shipping's pretty quickly. I got mine. Um, I ordered mine back in February. We were actually on our way to Valentine's Day dinner and Sam was like in the middle of a conversation with me and I was like, hold on a minute, I need to order this book. And so I did it on my phone and then it came like right as the release day in May. So um, I highly recommend it. If you just need something to like chip away at the rose colored glasses that I think sometimes the world like puts on you. Um, it's real and it's raw and it's engaging and it's truthful and it's just overall like inspiring for people that you know want to find like courage and strength and and feel com like lost in life or they're like on this journey of self-discovery like it's it's an amazing book i highly recommend it um i hope that you see those life lessons i hope there's more in there for you and i hope that you get a heck of a lot of it just like i did and we have come to the end of another episode of Coffee with Court. Sad, I know, but I will be back next week with all of my takeaways on Sweet Magnolias. If you haven't watched it yet and you want to know what I'm talking about, definitely go binge watch it now. 10 episodes on Netflix. Um, if not, hey, my takeaways might inspire you. <laughs> Bye, guys. See you next week.